Before we begin, I'm going to encourage anybody who feels moved to to go grab a percussion instrument because this morning is a earth centered uh, service. So if anybody would like to join in with playing some drums on mute along with the chants, you're welcome to go get a percussion and also a candle for our collective chalice lighting coming up. And also because we have an all ages Maybon ritual this morning, I would like everybody to take a moment to grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or something to color with. Any of the above would be wonderful. So you're gonna need those things throughout the service. So if you could go and get that. So we're going to begin with the chant. If you could just take a moment to ground and have a couple of deep breaths, we're going to sing our first chant together. At the beginning of our Westwood services, whether in person or online, we pause to affirm that the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so. Amiskuchiwaskagin, the Cree name for Edmonton, meaning Beaver Hills, house is Treaty 6 territory and a traditional gathering place and home to diverse indigenous peoples including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others. I personally acknowledge my role as a treaty person and feel continuously called to explore what that means and how to be a responsible and respectful ally. I encourage each of us to share, seek understanding on how to be curious and respectful allies and treaty people. Welcome to this morning, this day, and this opportunity to be together as a community. My name is Alara Stephanie Cadet. My pronouns are they and them. Our Maybon service this morning has been a collaborative efforts of members of our Westward Earth Centered group, including myself, Sheila Cloran, Heather McLean Smith, and Colette Oria. We will be your speakers and service leaders this morning as we celebrate the harvest in our lives. As a Unitarian Universalist congregation, we come together each week to learn more about what it means to be human. We're not here because we've figured it out life's questions or because we think we've got it right. We come here to learn more about being in relationship together how to listen, how to forgive, how to be vulnerable, and how to create trust and compassion in one another, and how to celebrate our differences together. Thank you for showing up from wherever you may be this morning. You are welcome here. A traditional ritual at the beginning of a pagan or earth-centered celebration is the casting of a circle to provide spiritual protection 
for participants as they travel to the unseen world. When gathered together, the high priestess, using her athame, I have mine here this morning, usually walks a circle around the celebrants, creating the boundary between the seen and the unseen. Today, we gather virtually, but the need for the circle remains. So together, we will create the circle using our collective imagination. So I invite you now to imagine yourself in a peaceful glade, surrounded by autumn trees, displaying their breathtaking fall colors of yellow, orange, and red. At the center of this glade stands an altar, and at the center of the altar stands the Westwood Chalice. To the east of the altar, the wind ripples and dances through the fall leaves. To the south, a merry bonfire crackles. To the west, a creek gurgles. And to the north sits a gleaming crystal sculpture of Mother Earth. Imagine yourself standing at the edge of the glade, holding your hands with other participants until a circle is formed around the glade. Take a deep breath in, exhale gently. On your next inhale and exhale, extend this circle of love to surround Mother Earth. Our circle is cast, we can begin. So good morning. At this time, we will now call the directions. So you can rise in body and spirit, or you can even just turn to face a direction from seated. So please face east. Golden is the ripened corn, like the golden rays of the sun rising in the east. The seeds of new life will be carried to the waiting fields on the breath of the wind. Spirit of East, please help us to sing and speak with clear voices as we honor the air and the wind. We bid you hail and welcome. Hail and welcome, spirits of the East. Please rise in body or in spirit and face south. The fire of the south is the same that cooks our food and burns in our hearth. By your blessed flame is the transformation of the wheat into nourishment. Spirits of the south, please help us to take in your essence like a red glowing ember to warm our hearth and home. We bid you hail and welcome. Hail and welcome, spirits of the South. Please face West. The fruit of the vine glistens in the setting sun. The sacred chalice holds the gift of the God. And in partaking, we share the libation of joyful measure. Spirit of the West. Help us to honor the sacredness of water and celebrate the gifts of living in community. We bid you hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. Please turn and face the north in body or in spirit. The abundance of the goddess is evident in the teeming fields. The harvest of her great body sustains our soul. Behold her gifts of the fruitful earth. Spirit of the North, please help us to honor the bounty of the earth. We bid you hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. And please turn to face the center. So this is the time, if you wish to light your chalice at home, that you can join us. As I light our chalice this morning, I invite you to light your own candle at home to help bring us closer together in spirit. We gather today to celebrate the autumn season and rejoice. 
May the next turn of the wheel bring us love and compassion, abundance and prosperity, fertility and life. As the moon above, so the earth below, this is a time of balance. Spirit of God and goddess, we light this chalice in honor of you. Hail, journeyer of the heavens, queen of brightness, king of beauty, gifts of gladness richly bringing, autumn sheaves and red leaves fall, generous be the heart within us. Open be our hands to all, justice to be in equal measure, harvest thankfulness, our call. Our ritual begins. So we begin with a responsive reading. So please join us in this responsive reading and you can read along with Alara. What is this day? This is Maybon, the fall equinox. What is the meaning of this day? At Maybon, we celebrate the balance of light and dark when day and night are equal. We gather in the harvest of summer and prepare for the winter ahead. How do we welcome this day? We celebrate the fall harvest and the gifts of abundance. This is a time of assessment and balance. We give thanks for the harvest and bounty in our lives, and we welcome the chance to reflect on what we need to change, reap, or how we can give back. This is part of keeping the balance. Who helps us recognize ourselves on this day? The goddess, mother of the harvest, the giver of gifts, the old one, the wise grandmother who teaches us to rest after our labor. The god, Mabon, son of the mother, spirit of the grain, the magical child who frees the animals and protects all things that are wild and free. What symbols do we use for celebration? Fruits and vegetables from our harvest. Winter squash, corn, tomatoes, pumpkins, autumn leaves, images of owls, blackbirds, animals, and the stag's antlers. How do we find ourselves on this day? With gratitude, we acknowledge our blessings and express our thanks. We find the courage to make change, transform, or let go. We accept loss and prepare for change. We release bitterness and the things that no longer serve us. We find ways to give back generously. The lighting of candles of concern and celebration is a cherished tradition in Westwood Unitarian and in Unitarian Universalist churches across the globe. It's a chance for us to share in the moments in our lives that make us deeper in our communities. This morning, we're going to be listening to a gift of music that Sheila has given us. That is the instrumental version of We Give Thanks, which is one of our hymns. So if you have a candle, I invite you to type it into our chat this morning while we listen to our candle lighting music. You may share your joys and concerns in the chat with us now.
We light one final virtual candle for all the unspoken joys and concerns that we carry in our hearts. And please feel free to keep typing them into the chat if you're not finished. But in the meantime, with your mic still on mute, also let's share in this affirmation together. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. The Westwood Unitarian Congregation is a self-supporting community. We rely on your donations to support our staff and our programming. During this unprecedented time, we need your financial support more than ever to maintain the connections with members and friends. Just because we aren't meeting in person doesn't mean there isn't still a ton of work happening. Outside of our online Sunday services, there are coffee chats, book clubs, our youth program, and our Saturday Spruce story times now on Zoom and Facebook Live. Please check out our website for more information on how to stay connected. There are a number of online methods you can use to support our community. The best method for supporting Westwood is to set up ongoing automatic donations. This offers the best long-term predictability and planning for us. Please contact our admin office to set this up. I also encourage you to remember to give to the local, national, and international charities that are helping others through this exceptionally difficult time. Please give generously if you are able to, to sustain the work of Westwood and to also share your abundance with others that are in need. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, together I receive. To begin our Maybon reflection, I have a reading from the Wee Moon Journal called Fall Equinox by Oak Shazar at Mother Tongue Inc. Perfect balance returns, light and dark in harmony again for the final harvest. As we wheel in the last lit days of seasonal symmetry, face the coming darkness together for gratitude for what we've learned about light. Autumn's grain is spring's seed. Paradox surrounds us with ripening wisdom. If we lose hope, remember that hope has two daughters to support our balancing acts, anger and courage. Instead of passive hope, embrace radical willingness. The good news is that an organism under attack creates blooming antibodies, devoted to restoring original health to the world's immune system. Activists are that devotion. The season of barrenness mists her breath on our window panes, a foreshadowing. Yet, we're full of our gathering visions. What holds you back? Every minus is a plus that just needs a stroke of vertical awareness. Awake, ask, what do you want to harvest into your life? Find the courage to move forward into action. Science and love, the two most powerful poles of humanity have been fierce, so fiercely separated. The truth is, we're all connected. The greatest disability is, we don't believe this. Believe it. Practice powerful participation in the great circus of life. Find balance on that wild trapeze. Morning and evening, maids hear the goblins cry. Come by our orchard fruits, come by, come by. Apples and quinces, lemons and oranges, plump unpeckered cherries, melons and raspberries, bloomed down checked peaches and swart headed mulberries, wild freeborn cranberries, crab apples, dewberries, pineapples, blackberries, apricot strawberries, all ripe together in summer weather, morns that pass by, fair eaves that fly, come by. Come by. I wanted to begin by sharing some of the fruits 
of our labors. So this is some crab apple jelly that Rowan and I have been harvesting. And here are a couple of tiny little cherry tomatoes from the harvest from our deck. And I'm sure you have things that you've harvested as well, either literal or figuratively at this time. The fall equinox is considered a time to pause for relaxation, for reflection on the fruits of the harvest, and also a moment to consider the dimming sunlight to come and what that means in our lives. It's a time to consider the harvest for the heart and the spirit, as well as the harvest for the body. In our climate in Edmonton, this time is the early harvest with much ahead in terms of harvesting the crops and the fields. So I'd like to read a little bit to you about the goddesses of Mabon. Demeter, Persephone, and Hecate are all goddesses in their own right. And Hecate herself is sometimes known as Triple Hecate because of her ability to walk between the seen and the unseen worlds, to occupy the space between them. She carries a torch that illuminates the shadows. It was Hecate, the crone, who saw the abduction of Demeter's daughter, Persephone, while mother and daughter were picking flowers out in the meadows. Hades, the god of the underworld, abducted Persephone and took her to his realm to be his bride. On hearing Persephone's screams, Hecate went to tell Demeter, who was already grieving for her lost daughter. When Demeter could not find Persephone, she sank deeper and deeper into her grief, and the once fertile earth became dry and barren. The gods said that Persephone could return to the earth if she ate nothing in the underworld. But Hades gave her pomegranate seeds, of which she ate three. So she was committed to stay with him. Eventually, a compromise was reached, and Persephone returned to her mother for nine months of the year, but had to spend the remaining three months with Hades. And so the earth blossomed once again and became fertile and remains so, except for during the winter months when Persephone returns down to Hades under the earth. This triple goddess myth reminds us of the natural cycles of life and that once winter has come, spring will surely follow. It is a story of the crops and the harvest and the rhythms of the seasons. Many of us who live in cities have lost touch with some of the cycles of the seasons. We might no longer mark the year with seasonal rituals and celebrations. So let us rediscover the rituals of the seasons and the celebration of harvest. And I feel like in Canada, she might have eaten a few more than just three seeds because winter feels a little longer than three months, but it's a nice story. <laughs> so today we reflect a bit on our harvest. What have you planted this year that you are harvesting in your life? What are you harvesting for yourself? What are you still tending that you hope will bring a harvest in the future? So as we reflect on what in our life brings us a rich harvest, we can also acknowledge any beautiful surprises or gifts or fruits unexpected that have come into our lives. Has there been any unexpected surprises or gifts? What fruits are you grateful for? And what might you nourish for yourself, for body, for heart, for spirit? What might you nourish for yourself to help you prepare for the winter ahead, for the journey to come as the wheel turns? At this time, we also reflect on the gifts that we share with others. What gifts do you share that can enrich others' lives or to help sustain our earth? And what are you still tending that you hope will bring a harvest in the future, perhaps in your relationships, your family, your community, or your world. 
So these are some of the questions that we might ponder at this time. And Alara is gonna take us through an activity that will help us explore those questions further. Another element of Mabon is this equal between day and night, light and dark. So as day and night are equal in proportion, so are the forces of creation and destruction that we all possess. The autumn equinox can be a time when we work in some way to restore balance in our lives and in our world. There may be many sacred acts, large and small, that we can do to create and restore some balance around us. So I'm going to read um, some possible ideas. And if you, if you want to close your eyes and just listen to the words and see what comes to you, you're invited to do so. And with gentleness and compassion, just notice what comes into your mind. And we'll begin with three deep breaths together. So deep breath in and out. Again, a deep breath in. And out. And third deep breath in. And out. Just continue breathing in a way that's easy and gentle for yourself. What can you make? Jam, jelly, pie, soup? crafts, arts, songs. What can you make that would be nourishing for you or your loved ones during this time of autumn? What is no longer serving you or no longer healthy for you that you may be ready to cut out or let go for your health or your wellness? Is there a belief or an attitude that you are ready to release? Is there something you need? What would you like to bring into your life? What do you need more of now? Imagine taking a walk around your neighborhood. Maybe you're in your yard or in your house, your home. Is there something that needs doing? A little task that you could fix or make right. Pick up some trash, fix something that's broken. Maybe talk to someone you haven't spoken to in a while. Is there a charity group or a nonprofit whose work you support? Is there some way you could offer a gift of gratitude to them? What prayer or blessing or ritual could you do for balance? What might be meaningful for you? Imagine spending some time in nature. Imagine caring for and appreciating the beauty around you, perhaps some fall gardening, raking, perhaps walk, maybe searching to find that perfect fall leaf or an interesting stick, perhaps in your own backyard or in your neighborhood. What small tasks can you do 
to help restore balance. Thank you. We'll end this reflection again with the three deeper breaths. So a deeper breath in and out. And again in and out. And one more in and out. And you may open your eyes. So together we join in the celebration of the collective harvest. We join together today in gratitude and honor of this season of change. We are not afraid of the decline or the decay. We trust that it will nourish the soil for the seeds of spring as the wheel continues to turn. Blessed be. And please join us in singing this next chant. We are a circle within a circle. And if you like to freely improvise and harmonize, go ahead. If you want to play rattles or shakers, please feel free. For our All Ages ritual this morning, we're going to go on a magical Maybon garden adventure together, right from our own homes. You're going to need that piece of paper and something to write or color with. So if you could put that, get it ready and put it in front of you right now, that would be great because that's where the adventure is going to begin. It's an adventure into the heart of the harvest. Each of our hearts that is in the center of each of our own harvests in our lives. So many things live in our hearts and life offers us so much to harvest. I invite you, so I'm going to quickly show you what I mean by the circles. Just draw three circles inside each other. They don't need to be fancy. Just draw three circles anywhere on your page but make them the size of your paper so there's room to write or doodle inside them. And I invite you at any point to just be inspired to write or doodle anywhere on that page and anywhere in those circles. My words are simply a guide to inspire you into your own harvest gardens. And I invite you to imagine, it's a big stretch, that the piece of paper in front of you is a big, beautiful garden and you are in the center of the garden you're in the very middle of the smallest circle in that garden it's extra special because the gardeners took extra special care to make this garden into beautiful layered circles 
of garden. What are those layers of circle made of in your garden? Maybe they're stone, maybe they're twigs, maybe they're gravel or circles of grass. Just take a moment to imagine what those circles that the gardeners laid out are composed of. Now, inside the smallest circle that you're currently in, in your garden, you notice that the gardener has placed all of the seeds that you have sown in the last year for yourself and those you love. What were the seeds you planted? What were the gifts you offered into life in the past year? What are some of the images and words that come to mind with those questions? I'll give you a moment to play in this layer of the garden. You can think about different areas of your life that you gave to. What gifts did you give to your families, to your friends? What about to your workplaces or larger communities? We give so many gifts into the world. Now, we continue our adventure and we grow curious about the other two layers of this garden. We move slowly and with great curiosity into the second circle of this garden that we've magically found ourselves inside. As we approach, we notice here that our mysterious gardener has placed all the fruits of this harvest season. In this layer of the circle are all those parts of our lives which we're most grateful for from this past year. What are you most grateful for? What gifts has life given you in the past, past year? What are some of the gifts of this season that you deeply appreciate? I'll give you a moment to play in this layer of our gardens. Now, holding those gratitudes in our hearts, we move to the third outermost circle in our magical Maybon garden. In this third circle, we notice that our mysterious gardener has laid out all of the things that we feel we need to let go of in the year ahead. The things that are left that we need to lay fallow, so that they can nourish our bodies and our minds and our spirits and grow into something new. So what are the things that you feel ready to let go of? What images or words come to mind? What do you feel you need to let lay rest or release? I'll give you a moment to play in this last circle of your garden. The amazing thing about having a garden on a piece of paper is you can come back and add to it anytime, just like a real garden. Now, please take a moment and reflect about what you have inside this garden of your life. And then when you're ready, bring your attention back to this big circle of community, which holds and uplifts us all throughout the many seasons of our lives. And then when you're back, you can join us at home in singing, Oh, We Give Thanks.
O oh, spirit of the earth who resides in the north, stay if you will, go if you must, thank you and farewell. Thank you and farewell. O oh, spirits of water who resides in the west, stay if you will, go if you must, thank you and farewell. Thank you and farewell. O oh, spirits of fire who reside in the south, stay if you will, go if you must. Thank you and farewell. Thank you and farewell. O oh, spirits of wind who reside in the east, stay if you will, go if you must. Thank you and farewell. Thank you and farewell. And please turn to face the center to your candle or chalice. As I extinguish the chalice at the center of our community and circle today, I thank you for holding our center during the celebration. Farewell, journeyer of the heavens, queen of brightness, king of beauty. Gifts of gladness richly bringing, autumn sheaves and red leaves fall. Generous be the heart within us. Open be our hands to all. Justice to be in equal measure. Harvest thankfulness, our call. Spirit of God and goddess, we thank you and bid you farewell. Thank you and farewell. Thank you and farewell. I invite you to return to our circle of love surrounding Mother Earth. Inhale a nice deep breath and release it. Find yourself once again in the forest glade we've held in our collective imaginations. See yourself standing at the edge. Release your neighbor's hands and thank them for holding this sacred energy with you today. Inhale one more time deeply. Release it fully. Our circle is open. Blessed be. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, The Circle is Open. May the circle be Thank you all so much for coming to our special Maybon service this morning. Now we're going to be getting ready to send folks into small groups. You won't want to miss our service next week and we'll be doing our service. My slide disappeared so I don't remember what it's on but that's okay. Uh, but it'll be great because it's Anne. 